Two is one, one is none. How do you carry a backup battery for your QRP operation without loading yourself down with two heavy batteries? Next on AA3K On The Go. Welcome to another episode of AA3K On The Go. I'm Mark, AA3K, and today we're going to talk about powering your FT817 with the WinCamp internal battery pack for the FT817 family of radios from Yesu. In my video about dressing up the FT817, uh, I got quite a few comments about the WinCamp battery setup and how it was very much worth it and a very nice addition to the radio. So after reading the umpteenth comment about that, I broke down and ordered one. So we're going to give a run through of what's included with the WinCamp kit, installing it in my radio, and a little quick demonstration of how the radio is working off that battery. Without much further ado, let's get going. All right, let's take a look at what came in the package with the WinCamp battery for the 817-818. As you can see, it says FT818 LiPo battery, but the same battery will work in the FT817, 818, and the ND varieties. Uh, even though this had a outer wrap of just plastic, uh, shipping wasn't too bad. One small dent in the box. And everything's fine inside. Uh, I did get, obviously, the US plug for it. I have not checked if, I have not checked if this is a universal switching power supply that can work around the world, 100 volts to 220, 240 or so. Instruction manuals, one in English, one in Chinese. Pretty straightforward though. You plug the battery into the circuit board on the battery cover. You plug the cable from the radio into the circuit board on the battery cover. Tuck everything away in the battery compartment and close her up and you're good to go. <clears throat> little piece of foam. I've always wanted a piece of foam. And then we have the new battery cover door. <clears throat> and the battery itself. Battery's got a little heft to it, but seems about the same as the original nickel metal high drive pack that I came with the radio. So in the battery door case, we've got the battery door itself. Comes with extra feet for the radio, which I suspect is to give it clearance for the switch and the input jack. It's made of metal, like the original door. And I guess part of the purpose of the little circuit board here is to help keep the battery from sliding. And there's also a little rubber strip to help hold the battery in place. <clears throat> the battery itself, 11.1 nominal volts, 3000 milliamp hours. As I said, a little bit heft. The original battery, it's nominal voltage of 9.6 volts and only 1400 milliamp hours. So this battery is essentially double the capacity, is actually over double the capacity, uh, and actually smaller. So, I mean, the battery chemistries have, you know, marched on and really gotten superb, but you do have the danger of a lithium polymer battery. I've seen a few notes on the FT817 Groups IO page that people after several years have had this battery pack swell on them, but additional replacement packs are available on eBay and apparently also the circuit board by itself, possibly without the switch, or maybe the switch hardwired to an, uh, a don't care or an on position to charge the battery pack outside of the radio. And you can have a second battery pack that you can swap out at base camp if you're out in the field or, or with the radio in the field. Uh, the charging control and such appears to be built into the power supply. So I'm kind of stuck using this with the with this radio to charge this radio instead of being able to just plug it into an external source of 12 volts or so. Let's get a quick weight of this battery. So 
Sorry for the reflection of all the lights. The new battery weighs 5.4 ounces. And the old nickel metal hydride battery from Yesu weighs 7.4 ounces, a full two ounces heavier. Uh, the new battery door is also made of aluminum. Might be a tenth or two tenths of an ounce heavier, maybe a few grams, uh, due to the addition of the switch, the power jack, and the extra circuit board. But it looks with this it looks like with this battery in, I won't be no worse than if I was to take it with the original battery. I have charged this original battery using my Yesu FT817's uh, built-in trickle charge. If I remember correctly, I had set it at like eight hours, uh, tested that the radio does run off the battery, but that was the extent of it. Uh, all of my other use of my FT817 has either been with a uh, external power supply that I mentioned in my video on how I dress up my FT817 or an external six amp hour LifePo battery. Okay, let's move on to installing uh, the new battery and the battery door in my FT817. Charge it up and see how it works. I have not verified that there is any significant charge on this battery. They usually do come with some, but we'll take care of that outside the video. All right, let's install the Windcamp battery in my FT817. And this procedure is the same for the entire Yesu FT817-818 family. I uh, get to the battery compartment. Let's move these out of the way for a moment. And no tools necessary. You just got to have some fingernails and pull back on that tip. I thought the original plate was aluminum or metal, but no, it's plastic. Put that aside. We take the Windcamp battery. Note where the pins from the male end of the connector go. And from looking at this previously, those are possibly the smallest pins I have ever seen in a connector like this. Making sure everything lines up, the holes on the female end of the connector go towards the top. The male end is towards the circuit board. The red wires from the battery go closer to the long edge of the cover plate and it should just pop in. Woo, come on. There we go. And kind of align this which way it's gonna go when Camp says insert the battery, label side up. Now we have these. Again, get the holes and the pins to line up. Red wires from this assembly go towards the green wire on this connector. Pop, it's in, place the tabs in the back, make sure the wires are, whoops, how did that fall off? Let's try that again. There we go. Don't tug on it too much. There's the tabs in the back. Make sure the connectors and such snap it down and we are installed. Currently, the, this battery pack is off. So I'm going to try to turn on the radio. Nothing. Flip it to on. And the radio powers up. And if I flip the switch to off, radio goes off. No power. Back to on. Radio stays off. And back on. Excellent. All right, let's get set up and do a power test here. In a 
fit of lack of self-control, I bought a QRP guys, QRP, SWR, watt meter, and dummy load kit. Uh, a friend of mine from work also bought the same kit and he has a 3D printer and whipped up a couple of cases from a thingiverse or such design and uh, snap it all together. Uh, it, this has a few quirks to it, but it will show the amount of power, at least roughly. It's not calibrated against anything coming in and uh, I can also calculate the SWR. And once I figured out the quirks previously, I found it to be as far as I could tell, accurate enough for the work uh, amateur radio operators do. Let's get this thing set up. I have it on internal load uh, to read power. Let's get a coax from the back of the radio and use the handy dandy legs on the stand. Connect it to the power meter. Ugh. And let me get a straight key here so I can key the rig in CW. Okay, we have, let's power the radio. Get it into CW mode, turn this on. Hopefully the display is not flickering due to shutter rate. And currently we're just on, we'll move off to the FT8 frequencies. The radio is in high power mode and straight key. My handy dandy, I think it's an Amico, but I am not really sure. J38 similar straight key. I have this on the side. And let's get the radio. We'll start the radio on 10 meters. Get it off of the FT8 frequencies. Go down to 28.060. And place the radio into CW mode here. And we're getting five and a quarter watts out. Let's try 15 meters, 21.072. Again, five watts from the internal battery. Just try 20 meters, 4.7 watts. Kind of be to be expected that uh, the power will change as the radio's frequency changes. Let's move to 7.060 megahertz, 40 meter CW, and only getting two and a half watts. Now this could be the meter, uh, just not how it's responding to seven megahertz. It could be the radio, I'm not sure. I've definitely made my share of contacts on 40 meters with uh, the battery. So I'm gonna say this battery is definitely a success working uh, and will allow me to go completely portable with the radio and just a key or a microphone and an antenna. And there we have it. A second battery option for the FT817, something that I can go ultra portable with, just key, microphone, antenna, radio, maybe coax, and something to log with as light as possible. Or a second battery if I do use my eight amp hour external batteries, especially if I'm expecting a very long uh, activation. So far, uh, just quickly using uh, the radio in my backyard. Uh, I'm happy with the battery, it's working well. It's providing all the power output that connecting an external battery uh, will do. Uh, I haven't really stress tested it for how long it will last, but most of my QRP activations are you know, 25 to 35 QSOs. I don't make a, an extended amount of time, uh, especially if the weather is cold and most of those activations are CW. So uh, the fingers are starting, get, starting to get cold and the CW is not coming out very well as I'm tapping it on the key. Hey, thank you for watching. I'm trying to help you turn the outdoors into your ham radio shack. If you like this video, give it a like subscribe to the channel 
and I'll catch you next time on AA3K on the go. This is Mark, AA3K73.